All right, I want to apologize for the delay in getting the stream going today. Um, updates and everything else kind of got in the way, so I had to keep pushing it back. Tying up these ends here at the, uh, the cabin, which is why I'm there. So, Not sure if this has the actual ship interior or not. I'm gonna see if it does. I cannot visit other places in the ship. That's a little disappointing. Still at Earth space dock. We get our first mission here. Transmission from Admiral Quinn, I'm sure. Oh, right, that new season there. Eesh. We have a diplomatic mission for you. An important Vulcan ambassador is traveling from his homeworld to the monastery at Pajem. Capturing the ambassador would be a major coup for the Klingons or Orions, so we're assigning you to make sure everything goes smoothly. You were to escort Ambassador Soketh to Pajem. Please meet him at Vulcan. Once you locate him, speak with him about the transport mission. Do whatever is necessary to keep him safe. Okay. A little strange. You gotta stand up and watch it'll load me back at its space dock. <laughs> oh. Game, game, game. I have to keep that in mind in the future for immersion purposes. Ah. <sighs>
So as soon as we get through this loading screen, we're off on a diplomatic mission to pick up a Vulcan and bring him to Pijam. Citizens of the Federation and her allies, it is my honor to introduce the official Starfleet Ships of the Line Museum. This undertaking, made possible by the help of so many of you, is to educate the galaxy at large about the history of some of the greatest ships to serve in Starfleet, and allow you to look at full-sized replicas of the ships, lovingly recreated and restored. Please, take your time and peruse this look back at our history. I know that I, myself, have already spent several days staring in wonder at these pieces of the past, preserved and revived for this day. After one standard Earth Day, the exhibit will move to several museums and galleries around the galaxy, but it will be visible once a year above Earth Space Dock and Deep Space Nine on this most important date. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'm not sure what to talk Entirely, that's, that's completely new. Update came in today, I don't know if it had something to do with that, or a recent update, or if that don't look like Anyhow, let's leave the solar system, shall we? My friends sacrificed so much to secure peace with the Klingons. I bear the responsibility for the consequences to him and his crew. A thought that troubles me to this day. The hope was that this alliance would last forever. It did not. The Klingons have chosen war. The Federation is doing its utmost to protect its borders and the billions of innocents who call this space home. But I fear that this conflict may be our undoing. We've set a course for Pajem. It's just a short, short trip. Traveling at about, I don't know, warp 1.5 or so. 1.75. Oh no, 1.25, my mistake. Maybe 75. It's somewhere around there. system not far from Vulcan passing by the the Procyon system which contains the Andorian homeworld now for those that are into the lore and have seen the series Star Trek Enterprise. I believe it was uh, the second or third episode of the first season. There was an incident on Pajem involving the Andorians and the early, um, well, the early version of Starfleet, which wasn't quite Starfleet. It might have been. There definitely wasn't the Federation of Planets at that point. Though. Kind of Earth's first real foray into space exploration at that point. 
Anyhow, the Vulcans were using Vigem as a spy station, secretly to spy on the Andorians, and the plot was accidentally uncovered by the humans, and yeah, it created a problem. Now, Pajem is pretty much off limits to everyone except for Vulcans on uh, religious or spiritual um, enlightenment trips. There, so. <laughs> As we can see, Vulcan is actually a trinary system. As we pass between all three of the home stars and head towards Vulcan itself. Screen. Greetings. Thank you for agreeing to escort the ambassador to Pajem. Ambassador Soketh is currently attending a ritual to honor the end of the Call Rec holiday. He will be done soon, but the ambassador is hesitant to use transporter technology. His bias against the transporters is not logical, but I have come to accept it. I believe that Soketh would be much more comfortable traveling by shuttlecraft. I have received clearance for you to land near the Ambassador's location. I look forward to meeting you in person. Alright, we'll take a shuttle down to the Vulcan surface. Or I will take a shuttle down. I don't think I need an away team for this one. No. Looks like I have one anyway. Starfleet Shuttlecraft. This is Vulcan Orbital Control. You are cleared to land at the requested coordinates. Welcome to Vulcan. Please enjoy your stay. Won't be staying long. Trip wait until Savin changes his mind. Hmm, I wonder why Savin won't grant the ambassador permission. Speak to seven then. Peace and long life. 
do you seek knowledge of the ancestors? Sarkef accuses me of abandoning logic, but he is the one refusing to explain his reasons for wanting to go to Pajem. The planet is sacred. Our ancestors walked those paths. They found understanding and serenity in its quiet. When I am at Pajem, I feel more at peace than any place else in the galaxy. The gem has been touched by outside influences in the past. The Federation is at war. Now more than any other time, we must protect this refuge. Do you seek knowledge of the ancestors? Why do the Vulcans restrict access to the Many years we went ago, over this. the gem yeah. was used for political purposes. Technology used to spy on the Andorians was hidden beneath the sacred sanctuary. It should never have happened. Buildings that had stood for 12 centuries were destroyed because we allowed politics and war in a place where there should only be logic and contemplative thought. When the monastery was rebuilt, we pledged to keep it safe from the cares of the galaxy. Only those who seek peace may enter. Do you seek knowledge of the ancestors? The Vulcan people have honesty. Even a people who reject emotion require peace and contemplation. We are a spiritual people. Our rituals guide us throughout our lives. Vulcans who choose a life of study and isolation, as the monks at Pajem have done, help us maintain our connection with our ancestors. The monks' study of Sirach's words in the future <coughs> give us all a greater understanding of who we are and who we should strive to be. Do you seek knowledge of the ancestors? Tell more about Sirach. Centuries ago, the Vulcans were creatures of emotion. We fought one another in a series of wars that devastated our planet. Our species was on the brink of annihilation. Sirach taught us to embrace peace and to put aside our emotions in favor of logic. Zorak ushered in a time of awakening on Vulcan. His writings, the Kirshara, shaped all that we are. Without Zorak, the Vulcans you know would not exist. Do you seek knowledge of the ancestors? Don't you trust Ambassador Sokka? I neither trust him nor distrust the Ambassador. I simply do not understand him. He will not reveal his reasons for wishing to speak to the abbot, and has refused a mind meld with me. Normally I could respect his privacy, but other things I have heard trouble me. Do you seek knowledge of the ancestors? So tell me more about what you've Sokoth heard. Sarkath has spent more and more time away from Vulcan in recent years, and seems ill at ease in what was once his home. Tapella admits he has changed in the past few months. He spends hours closeted in his study and does not share meals with his staff as he used to. Tapella says that the stress of the war with the Klingon Empire is taking its toll. She hopes the peace of Pajim will restore him. Do you seek knowledge of the ancestors? What if the abbot agrees to speak with Tisoketh? By a the monks do not use any unnecessary technology. Even replicators are not permitted on Pajem. There is a communications array available to the monks for emergencies. Soketh's request does not qualify. Do you seek knowledge of the ancestors? I seek you not repeating that anymore. Anyhow, is there any way I can persuade you to allow Soketh to visit I will Pajem? permit it if you will pledge to me, on your honor as a Starfleet officer, that you will protect Pajem from harm. Soketh says his reasons for wanting to speak to the Abbot are private. I will accept that, but only if you are with him. I know I can trust Starfleet. Please, protect Pajem from any who would violate its sanctity. All right. Looks like I got the permission he needs. Welcome to Vulcan. Do you have any questions? So tell me about the gem. is a small world near Andoria. It is sacred to our people. There have been Vulcans on Pajem for centuries. In 2152, 
The ancient buildings that housed our monastery were destroyed by the Andorians. The Andorians? But they're also a part of the Federation. It was a failing they in our logic then. that led to conflict with the Andorians. We have corrected our error. After the Federation was founded, a group of Andorians, Vulcans, and humans rebuilt the monastery as a symbol of peaceful coexistence and cooperation. Since then, a group of monks has lived there. They study the ideals of Sirach. Do you have any questions? What business do you have, Epizu? My business is my own. If you must know more, I require a meeting with the abbot. He will not use subspace communications. So if I am to receive his counsel, I need to meet with him directly. Do you have any questions? I've spoken to Savin. Why doesn't he trust you? How should I know? He is a small man with small concerns. Thankfully, he has listened to reason. And our journey won't be delayed any longer. I am ready to leave now. Is the shuttle prepared for departure? Let's go. He will jog with me. He just won't run. I'll jog, my friend jog. This is a long walk otherwise. Starfleet Shuttlecraft, we have logged your flight trajectory, and you are clear for departure. Live long and prosper. Mm, can't talk to him. Oh, it looks like we've already returned to the ship. I don't know why they have that intermediate shuttlecraft portion, but whatever. Let's depart the system and head towards Pajem. Pajem is actually close enough I don't have to plot a course. I can just manually pilot it and go... Warp 2.5. We'll be there shortly. Sensors on maximum. All kinds of anomalies. Well, I'm gonna go check out the anomalies. Auxiliary power to boost the engine.
<clears throat> what I'm picking up is good for crafting, so I try to take every opportunity I get when I visit a system to scan for anomalies and take a look. We'll do the same thing on the planet as well. It's Magnusite ore ahead. Scan that energy pattern. Oh, yeah. Klingons. This is Captain Katak to all Klingon vessels. Target their warp drive. There will be no escaping our vengeance this time. Cloaked way over here. Of course, part of that's me going way over here, checking out anomalies. Instead of following me, they decided to wait over here. It's all right. We'll take care of them. Show yourselves. Klingon ambush. You're quite the ambush, right? Because I happen to be out of the area. Cease your fire, Captain! Perhaps today is a day for words. My fellow captains were blinded by our vengeance toward the shapeshifter aboard your vessel. They have died with honor. But if I am to die this day, then I would prefer to regale the halls of Stovokor with the tale of that foul creature's death. Shapeshifter. Ha! So even the mighty Federation has been fooled by the beast. Your guest from Vulcan is not as he or she seems, Captain. They are an undine. They put on a false face and try to control us. But we Klingons know better. We will hunt them down until the last of these honorless dogs die screaming. An undine? Have any proof? Ah! 
Allow me to stick a blade in its belly while I look it in the eye while it dies. That should be proof enough, even for Starfleet. Take that into consideration. If you wish the honor of the kill yourself, then it is yours to have. So long as the Undine dies, I will meet my death with eyes wide open and victory in my heart. I await your decision. Close hailing frequencies. Science? What do you think? <laughs> so Ambassador Sokath could be one. Unfortunately, that would violate his embed. Ambassador, ambass, ambassadorial immunity. Wonderful. Tactical. Where is Ambassador Sokat now? Sound precaution. Agreed. Engineering? So why use a Starfleet vessel? Yeah, and the Klingons. Is my friend. Oh, hail the ambassador. Call him to the bridge. Open a channel to the Klingon vessel. Let's settle this. My patience is growing thin, Captain. If you lack the stomach to slay the beast aboard your vessel, any Klingon here would gladly do it for you. I'd hate for you to stain that pretty Starfleet uniform with Undine blood. Very generous, but then unnecessary. Then the beast is slain? Makka! Very good. Perhaps you've the heart of a warrior after all. Let me look upon our enemy, and tonight we will dine together as warriors and drink to the honored dead. I present Ambassador Sokat. Captain, I take my meditations very seriously. Why have I been summoned to the bridge? Accused? Meet your accuser. Alive? You're a fool, Captain! Strike now before it's too late! Not without proof, Katak. You want proof? Then lower your shields and allow me to beam over. Once the Undine's blood coats my blade, you'll see it for what it truly is. A Grint Hound in Tark's clothing. Ambassador, allow me to There's explain. There's no need, Captain. The situation is not difficult to unravel. My concern lies in the logic of you entertaining this Klingon's meritless claim. Meritless, yes. But not unreasonable. A most illogical conclusion. Allow us to examine the facts, Captain. You have a crippled Klingon vessel, whose captain has made unsubstantiated claims that I am an Undine, a species that is known to both the Federation and the Klingon Empire as a considerable threat. Thus, a reasonable consideration. Potentially, but only if a great many other factors were to be true. Is it not much more likely that the Klingons have, in the face of defeat, 
instead sought to exploit Starfleet's desire for peaceful resolutions to conflict in order to repair their vessel and renew their assault. Status of the Klingon vessel? Red alert, lock a weapons. True warrior strikes without mercy, Captain. I only hope to teach you this lesson personally before the Undine does. We may not be able to best your vessel, but a Klingon knows many roads to victory. The beast may have evaded my vengeance for now, but I can still ruin its plans here at Pajem. Scan the area. I'm taking an away team down. No, it's too dangerous. A wise precaution. Though I admit I am eager to see my people safe, I will await word until the monastery is secured. And Captain, let not my journey here be for naught. Away team to transporter room one. A wise precaution. Why am I going through this again? Oh, the console port's a little glitchy. Two security. Yeah, I like the setup. It's my entire senior staff, but whatever. We need to find the monks. Four anomalies as
this off. Good day. I have terrible news. Vulcan security forces have discovered the body of Ambassador Soka. They have determined that he was killed by a phaser blast at short range. His remains were discovered in a stasis chamber hidden in a cavern beneath the Ambassador's residence. The Ambassador on your ship, the one that I have been working for, is an imposter. You need to be very careful. This imposter was able to fool Sokes' closest associates for months. He is crafty and very patient. Now that he has been discovered, he will be dangerous. We'll find him. And he's headed here, right? Such emotion on your face. I see now my deception has been exposed. Pity. Capturing the abbot so we could replace him as well would have been beneficial. But we are strong. We will prevail. You are the weak, and the weak shall perish. Not just yet, I got a few more anomalies I want to look into. Did that seriously just happen? That quickly? It's not seem right. Somehow I remember there being a lot more to this. can transport back.
couldn't work at all. That's empowered to see it. Holy shit. Target that thing. Doesn't happen.
Captain. This is Captain LaForge of the USS Challenger. Glad to see we made it here in time to lend you a hand. Perhaps you'll return the favor someday. Forge out. Oh, Jordy. That's a surprise that I wasn't expecting. Part of the system. Yeah, I beamed my own bridge. Tail Starfleet Command. The ambassador was an Undine? I'm afraid their infiltration of the Federation goes much deeper than we realized. Who knows what kind of havoc they could create? Congratulations, Lieutenant. And thus finishes Episode 2 Diplomatic Orders. Uh, usually this is the point where I end uh, each of these. I bring you guys through the grind, uh, the dilithium mining, a lot of the repetitive stuff that's going to take us over and over throughout this journey, unless um, requested by viewers, because, let's face it, there's a lot of grind in this game. So, um, Just for the sake of doing so, though, I am going to show you the ship and weapons modifications I'll make before heading off. So. Let's apply our captain skills. We've earned some two space points, yes. I'm going for the tank build on this, so let's just keep working at it. And our inventory, inventory has a replicator. No kidding. All right, well, we're gonna want that. I'm gonna want that. And that's bound to account, so I gotta replicate it. Oh, alright, we'll actually use the replicator. Here, just you know, basic stuff I've picked up. So yeah, that's uh, where we're gonna end this, and we'll be back with the third episode, uh, one o'clock Central Standard Time. Tonight.